Hey everybody, how's it going? So Google put in place a policy about a year ago with regards to what it is they allow to be advertised on their platform. And it's something that uh, a lot of people brought to light, including I fix it in this excellent article, an open letter to the FTC on Google's banning of repair business ads. And if you want to take a look at what this means, over here in Google AdWords' policy, it says restricted businesses. And down here, it says third-party consumer technical support. The following is not allowed. Technical support by third-party providers for consumer technology products and online services. Examples, non-exhaustive list, technical support for troubleshooting, security, virus removal, internet connectivity, online accounts, for example, password resets or online login support or software installation. I think that there were good intentions behind this policy, which is you have all those people that will call you or email you and pretend that they're from Microsoft. They pretend they're from Google. They act in bad faith and say that you have a virus on your machine, and if you give them 50 to 100 bucks, they'll remove it for you and optimize it. And often they'll use this type of wording that is just on the line of what is legal, but it's enough to trick people that don't understand technology into giving them money to fix a problem that they never had. And I believe that someone at Google likely had good intentions when they wrote this. It wasn't some sort of anti-repair BS where they programmed the chip to kill itself if you try to read it just so you have to give Apple $1,500 when your machine stops charging. I don't think it's any sort of Apple kind of BS. I think that this may have had good intentions. The reality is that the way it was implemented appears to have been in a way where it stops in probably 95 to 99% of third-party repair services, even the legit ones, from posting an advertisement. Not just the people that say, you have a virus and we'll help you fix it for $100. You didn't know you had a virus, but trust me, you do. Give me 100 bucks and we'll fix it. Not just that kind of scammy crap where they're targeting tech-unsavvy people, but even people that just put something like, you know, screen repair service or liquid damage repair service and AdWords. Now, for me, this wasn't something that was really something that I was even on my radar or that I cared about too much. I got rid of AdWords about four and a half years ago. It helped. Over a few months of time, I was able to go from grossing this much to grossing this much. Well, you know, it wasn't a big difference in the overall scheme of things, but it did help me get to that next level, and I was able to maintain that without AdWords for several years. Several people have suggested uh, trying, out, uh, trying this out again, different campaigns with different marketing people, some that I've worked with in the past, if we are moving to a new place. The new place is going to be able to take on a lot more business, so I figured, what the hell, maybe I'll try. And I got hit with this interesting policy. So if you take a look at my accounts over here, you'll see that I have a bunch of disapproved ads. Fast data recovery in New York, free estimate, we'll get your files back, rossmangroup.com slash data recovery, whatever. And you know, this is nothing too racy here. It says, let the highly trained technician save your data and repair your devices. Learn more. The Rossman Group, providing the best experience by focusing on your expectations. I'm not saying that you have a virus that you don't have. I'm not using trademarks like Seagate or Western Digital or Apple or Toshiba or anything like that. Just this. And it says policy, other restricted businesses, trademarks, and ad text. And if I scroll through, this is everywhere. Not just with the ads where we mention, let's say, MacBook liquid damage repair, even something just basic like data recovery like that. Now, you may say, Lewis, well, this is some area where you just need to deal with the rules. The rules say no third party repair. Your third party rule. Well, then, let's just take a look at what happens if I Google hard drive data recovery. So if we Google hard drive data recovery, corporate hard drive recovery, get a free quote, ironmountain.com, ad, trust.ontrack.com, hard drive data recovery, ad, securedatarescue.com, 299 hard drive data recovery, ad, data recovery center, New York City, ad. And if I scroll, some of the Google Places listings here are also ads. Now, when you speak to Google, they will say that this is restricted because you're not the manufacturer repair service. But... How many other people are allowed to advertise? And this is the thing that bothered me when it came to tariffs. So I did a video a while back where I was talking about tariffs and how I wanted to import these microscopes because I have the nice version of the microscope, as you can see here. It's the one that has this piece, not the piece that Paul's has. So this piece over here gives you a really good microscope image, whereas the one that Paul has over there gives an absolute garbage image, and they're saving about 10 to $20 per microscope by using that thing. I found out who was making them, and I decided, let me import them and sell them to my customers who want to have microscope images in their videos that look like mine. The problem is that there were 25% tariffs. And if you were to take a look at the 
government's own website, it says that these microscopes have no tariffs. But when I ordered them, I had a 25% tariff. Now that's something that got on my nerves. Why is it that there's a tariff here that exists that is not listed on the government site? So if you take a look over here, uh, U.S. Tariff and Trade Data, at dataweb.usitc.gov, we are not, we, there's no tariff there. And if you look over here at hts.usitc.gov, there's also no tariff listed here. But when I import them, 25% tariff. Now, this is somewhat unfair. If you're going to have a tariff, you should, if you're going to have a, a fee of any type, you should list it the same way that businesses in the free market like mine are required to list the fees that we charge customers. But if you're going to have a fee like that, if you're, and if you're going to charge it unfairly by not listing it beforehand, wouldn't it be nice if you at the very least charged all businesses that fee? And I did a stream on this where the businesses that started and applied for their exemption right after it came out, they were able to get a tariff exemption. But anybody looking to apply for an exemption afterwards is not allowed to apply for an exemption. The only people that can get an exemption are the people that applied immediately after the tariff came out which means that we have two different sets of businesses playing by two different sets of rules. And this is the type of issue that Google has right now. So people who already had ads from five or ten years ago, they get to keep their ads, but new businesses that want to enter the field can't have them. Businesses that applied for their exemption because they were already selling microscopes two to five years ago, they get to avoid the 25% tariff. But the new businesses that want to go in and compete so that we can provide competition so that maybe the other businesses will decide it's worth it for us to put a better microscope mount on there so that we're, instead of trying to save 10 or 20 bucks, we'll be forced to do it. No, that, that type of free market competition is not allowed. It's aggravating when you see two different sets of rules. One for one set of businesses, another for another set of businesses, whether it's with tariffs and microscopes or whether it's the ability to advertise. If you're going to have a specific rule, that's fine, you have your rule, but I think that that rule should be applied equally. And if you're going to say that businesses that do any sort of third-party technical support are not allowed to have ads, then Google, what the fuck? What is this doing here? And I would like something better than a copied and pasted canned response from someone that is just paid to copy and paste canned responses as to what it is that allows those companies to have their listings, but our company is not allowed to have our listing. Some have brought up that perhaps the issue here is reputation. Perhaps your business is considered less reputable on Google than these other businesses, even though that's not mentioned. Let's take a quick look at that. If you click over here, you'll see that one of the results, on track, 4.7 stars, 15 reviews, and these are reviews on Google, by the way, not another platform. Not terrible. Over here, you have Amnet Data Recovery. Amnet Data Recovery has 4.9 stars with 11 reviews. Not bad, even if their Yelp account is three stars with seven reviews. Secure Data Rescue, ouch, one star, three reviews. Now let's contrast that to our business. Rossman Repair, 4.9 stars on Google with 719 reviews. I have 10 times, if not 100 times, as many reviews as all these other companies combined, and a history that goes back 10 and a half years to spring of 2009, if you sort by date. And if you look over here on Yelp, you'll see four and a half stars with 301 reviews. Google, why is it that your rules appear to apply differently to different companies engaged in the exact same practice in the exact same field? Don't canned response me. Don't canned response me on how it is an issue related to trademark or copyright when we have an advertisement that uses no one's brand name, no one's company name, and no one's trademark. I genuinely want to know, without a canned response from an actual human being, why it is these rules apply differently to different companies in the same industry. Let me know. Lewis at RossmanGroup.com, spelled with two S's and two N's. And that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.